Good evening and welcome to the latest episode of the Eve Prosper Market Show. I'm your host, Lock Fox, and we're here with a very interesting show, seeing as it is the week that skill trading has finally been announced. But before we start there, let's go ahead and cover some quick show news. Again, if you want to follow the show, all you got to remember is Eve Prosper. That'll get you to Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, and the blog. If you want to interact with us off the air, the best place to do so is on the Tweet Fleet Slack. Information on how to join will be in the channel info below. Lastly, if you want to support the show, the best way to do so is at our Patreon at patreon.com slash eveprosper. Our patrons do keep the, the show on the air, and uh, it does take a significant amount of work and effort and overhead to get this show out to you guys, and our patrons do make that possible, and it keeps it ad-free and uh, keeps us going week over week. If you get value from the show, please consider contributing. One more thing, out on the blog, be sure to stop by for our latest blog about the brain meat market, where we do some forecasting about uh, expected prices on release. And also for our market maker interviews, we had Charlinda Akateru two weeks ago, and we have one ready for release uh, next Monday, so keep tuned there. Uh, also, they will be available in podcast form. All the information will be at eveprosper.com. With that, let's go ahead and move into the news. Uh, we're going to start very quickly on the biggest piece of news for the week. Uh, skill trading was big and hot and contentious. And there are a lot of points, and I don't know, I, it would take an entire show to really talk through them here in front of you guys. So uh, first, I do expect the extractors to be relatively cheap. Uh, CCP has not announced official prices yet, but uh, if you read the blog, I, I did point out a whole, my expectations for how they'll be evaluated in Aurum. So if you want to be in the on the seller's side with extractors, uh, what to expect for prices there. The more interesting piece would be the injectors. And uh, my expectation here is that skill points are going to be grossly undervalued is that i really expect a lot of supply and only a medium amount of demand in the short term uh, especially with as many farming people thinking they're going to make a quick buck on farming alts i really expect people to really undercut the value of those skill points versus the time it takes to grind them um, there was a correction that uh, i had i had assumed uh, a low end of a million skill points a month but several people corrected me that you should be expecting a farmer to be extracting nearly two million a month and that means that for the four extractors they could be putting out in a single month to try and make back an entire plex i think is going to be difficult i think it's going to be a good way to subsidize those accounts that you don't need skills on that you may have finished the alt but you don't want to give up uh, a resource that is that has value but I don't believe that you're gonna get to Plex parity so I've put some guidelines in the blog on how I expect uh, valuations to go out basically to say the cost of the extractor in Aurum uh, normalized against Plex plus the the price of the skill points uh, in time again prorated to Plex and take that skill point value in half. Um, I expect at least a 50% savings when they hit the market, and we may even see that go much lower in the opening days. So it's going to definitely be a great time to be a buyer, uh, to stock up on all that brain meat. With that, and, and again, if you guys want to hear more about this, uh, we can do another show or another uh, piece about this. Um, there's been a lot of news going around. Delone Wolf has a has a piece up. Johnny Pugh has a piece up, which he does in adorable MS Paint. Um, and there are blogs galore because everybody has opinions. And for those who are shouting RMT and and uh, pay to win, I disagree with you. I believe that this is uh, just trading a valued commodity. And it should be extremely interesting if you're able to be there in the first week 
uh, to sort of capitalize on what I think a lot of people are going to be surprised on for prices. And it'd be, it's going to be a really great chance to stock up with an expectation to sell perhaps in the upcoming fall, uh, would be the long, would be the long projection I would be betting on. Next, uh, just to reiterate, it is CSM season, uh, so go ahead and be following the CSM watch. They're doing interviews with as many candidates as they can get their hands on. We just released the uh, analysis show where we go over Vic Jefferson, Commander A's, Kyle Aparthos, Nikolai Agnon, and Bob Mon. Uh, and that came out this week. I'm on that show, so if you want to hear my opinions about things, that's that's a place to go do it. There's, there's going to be a lot of content coming out in the next month or so, so keep tuned there, get educated, and you're going to want to be able to vote. We're also going to have a official roster for Prosper, the, the candidates I believe that uh, best serve the interests of the demographic this show is aimed to, so that's market people, that's developers, that's uh, PV ears, that's high second miners and industrialists and uh i have a small list started but i do have spaces open so um if you are running and you would like to lobby for one of those spaces i would love to hear it and uh we're also going to have a couple of our more favoritist csm candidates on the show for interviews on our market maker interview series so keep tuned for that uh lastly before we move on uh the just a couple of quick pieces of news. The 07 show starts up again next week, next Thursday, I believe. And CCP Seagull has a update for the first quarter of the year out for you guys. So uh, it's worth tuning in if you want to know what's coming up on the horizon, if you might be a little, uh, a little rusty. Moving on, let's go get started on Plex. And Plex uh, is, of course, going to be interesting. So uh, just as we were talking about skill trading, the extractors are going to take Aurum, so we expect people to want more Aurum. But in my long-term prediction, I expect the devaluation of skill points, both through the the injector loss when you're up in the higher tiers, especially that first and second tier, will be part of the devaluation. And I expect a huge glut of supply to really drive down the price of skill points specifically on top of that Aurum cost. So because of that, I expect Plex to, the swings in Plex to be tempered. So um, though I am projecting, I'm forecasting a rise into the 1.4, maybe 1.5 range uh, ahead into Citadel. As we go into the summer and as we go into the next fall and we really start to get those skill points loading up from uh, skill point trading, I expect the Plex market to be less positive. I expect swings to happen. I think this is a great opportunity that for high value investors to be playing on the volatility because uh, as I've discussed in the blog a couple of times, Plex volatility just only tends to be positive. That for some 60% of cases, Plex trends upwards. And if you even go further than that, I mean, the, the cumulative prob probability of of Plex being up one week over the last at any point in time is extremely positive, right? It's, it's over 60%. And the hope is that skill points will inject more volatility and move the, move the balance beam closer to the zero point. Um, just about every other product, uh, real life or in game has a tendency to ebb and flow, but Plex only ever seems to ebb. So uh, that's sort of my prediction for the for the uh, current thing. I did show in the prediction blog that I expected to cross the 1.2 mark, uh, wiping out December's weakness. And it looks like we're there if we do. Um, but if we look at the one year view, uh, again, the, the slope is pretty steep if we look at the entire year. But if we instead just cut to quarter four, where we cross the billion mark and uh, chart it out there, I think we're in a much more stable 60 and 90 day curve. 
again, we're seeing that heat show up where uh, they're outstripping the price of uh, multiple pilot training certificates. I expect that to be wiped out in the next few minutes. Uh, this, this graph may even uh, be an hour or so too old to really show that opportunity. Um, but again, MPCTs tend to track Plex uh, even if they lag slightly. If we look at the buy and sell orders, um, I find it most interesting that uh, the market was pretty slow considering uh, to decide on what to do about Plex in, ahead of multi, uh, uh, ahead of skill point trading. There are a couple of notes I have if you want to be speculating in Plex. One, it, the window to buy, I believe, is basically closed. Uh, one, once we crossed 1.2 billion, I, I don't want to tell you guys to buy unless you absolutely need them to keep your account open. Uh, as a speculator, I would not be buying Plex. Two, keep in mind that there is still a lot of the Incarna Aurum out there in the world, and it's going to be very tempting, especially if we hit the $1 or 2 or $3 price point uh, on extractors, to liquidate that Aurum to get extractors. And that means that if you may be expecting a lot of people to be buying Plex to turn into Aurum, to turn into extractors, that I think you're going to be uh, disappointed because I think we're only going to see half of the expected volume coming from, from new Aurum and at least half of it coming from existing Aurum. Now, that's speculation on my part. I have no way to back up that uh, without CCP Quant giving us a report. I will ask about it because it would be a great thing to talk about at FanFest, but we're not going to hear about it for, se for a couple of months. Though, the other piece of the speculation puzzle is that I still expect things to be positive into Citadel, which I believe is supposed to launch in March. So, Though I think we will rise quickly to 125, uh, maybe a little bit higher. I think we'll be locked in at that point or bounce between 125, 120 billion. And then we will rise into Citadel towards 1.4 or 1.5 billion, at which point would be the spot I'm looking to sell at. So if you're if you bought in, especially if you bought in under 1.2, my target would be 1.4. And I'd be looking to sell in March uh, as the things play out. Uh, try not to lose faith because uh, I think it's going to be a bumpy ride to that 1.4. But I think we're going to hit 1.4 nonetheless. And then just to look at the other markets very quickly, um, we see that, uh, again, I whenever I point out that there is uh, instability, it... It gets wiped out the next week. Um, I had remarked earlier in the year that Amar was pretty spiky and it got back in line. And then I was remarking just a couple of weeks ago that Dodixie was really spiky and it's got back in line. So uh, good job, guys. Uh, whoever is listening to the show and and destroying those margins, uh, give me a send me a send me a comment or a mail. I would love to hear about it. Moving on to minerals. Now that we've talked our frickin' heads off about uh, RMT tokens. Tritanium. Uh, so minerals are a little bit weird this week, and I probably should have included some more of the zoom in graphs. Uh, keep tuned to the Twitter account if you want to see the random graphs I end up pulling during the week. Uh, I tend to try and share graph porn that way. Um, tritanium is ticking up. We've been seeing a, a stability, maybe even just a little bit of downward weakness. Uh, around 6.3 but as of right now as of this show looks like we're tracking up slightly um, I'm having a hard time really predicting if that's just a blip or not uh, the the indicators say could could really say either way um, but I don't I don't think this is a breakout opportunity to be buying in a bunch of tritanium and holding on to it uh, pyrite was also showing stability last week with uh, more heat than expected the trend seems up slightly, but still flat. So we've come off 11.2 and are now centered around 11.4. Uh, again, it's really hard to say if anything is particularly going on. It could break out. It could go back down again. The the indicators are very mushy at the moment. Uh, Mexilon, I did bring up last week that I had expected it to start tracking up again. And uh, it looks like it lost a little bit of ground keeping keeping tight to that 60 mark 
Again, I think that Mexilon's not a bad place to park some money, but I don't know if it, we're going to see as large a success on speculating on it as we did in October. Isogen continues to track down, uh, now staying around 105. Um, it looks like our fall is coming to an end. Uh, we may just, again, I think we're in oversupply because of the Omber rebalance. More Omber means more Isogen, even if the Omber recipe did not add much more Isogen. Um, looks like we're hitting that equilibrium. There were some pretty big, uh, looks like, buys going on here. But the, the trend looks like we're stabling out at about 105. Uh, Noxium is a bit of a surprise. We saw it tracking down, again, that I've been saying it being on the higher end of the rarity spectrum that um, I expected it to keep tracking down through oversupply. But it looks like we saw some heat last week up to 490 and uh, the market just reset as of last, last night. Um, again, this one's really hard to pin down. That's a pretty big uh, bar to be moving in one day, and I hate to have it clipped off there, but I wasn't able to pull a fresher version. Uh, Zydrine. Zydrine now is particularly interesting. So part of this is that it looks so different to last week is that uh, we, we've lost some of the high points that we were seeing before, so we're a bit zoomed in, zoomed in further than usual. Um, but as I said, I had expected it to stay at 900, but we're seeing it rise back above the 1000 mark tracking to 1100 which is a little bit weird seeing as it looks like cell volume is a little bit weak not incredibly weak just a little bit weak and if we look at the actual traded volumes they're not they're not that far out of line so i'm not sure exactly what's going on here i think zydrine might get it be getting propped up artificially at the moment though i can't really tell you who or why or how um, but we're seeing, for instance, Megasite, which should be rarer and more valuable than Zydrain, coming down off the 1100 point that it had been at for the last week. And so, especially versus Megasite, I'm having a hard time believing that Zydrain can stay at price parity with Megasite. Just to use really rough numbers, Megasite should be 20 or 30 percent more valuable than Zydrine just by design. And the fact that they're basically the same price is extremely odd and is bubbly territory. And then last, the uh, my personal darling, Morphite, I had expect to track further up. Uh, looks like we hit the peak, though, last week at 11.5k and we're tracking downwards uh, into this week. Um, this might be due to less, less sustained Tech 2 activity than I remember seeing in the weeks past. Again, the, the, this is a little harder to pin down exactly what's going on. If you can get in at under 1100, I think it's a decent buy, but it might take some patience to actually get paid uh, if you're buying in at that point, it's still a pretty unstable position to be to be buying in. If we look at the zoom in again, this was sort of the reason I, I I had it on my watch list is since the start of the year we've seen uh, a shortage on the sell markets and and really stable buy demand, but we're seeing that track up ever so slightly uh, here as we move forward. So uh, we might be seeing. We might be seeing more activity come to right to lower the price so that we see more supply and then just to look at everything together um the weird pieces are noxium's uh buy order collapse over here uh should signal a pretty decent dip in prices coming up uh isogen again looks like it's flattening out at 105 and zydrine and megasite are at price parity which is Strange. Very, very, very strange. Moving on to fuel. Fuel again continues to do what it's been doing over the last few weeks. We see Galente, Amar, and Minmatar fuels staying relatively stable at the 750 mark. And we see Kaldari fuel doing its own damn thing at the 900 mark. So ahead of Citadels, there are a few places to be speculating. And one of them is in fuels. So um, some of the heat in the fuel isotope market 
is due to restricting supply. Uh, I do believe that CFC is restricting the null sec supply so that high sec can't quite keep up with with demand. Um, two, I expect that fuel to be going into research towers specifically um, ahead of researching Citadel BPOs so that uh, people are prepared on day zero to actually build uh, these these citadels at proper efficiencies. And the best place to do those are in Caldari Towers. Um, and that's basically where I expect everything to be going. So we're seeing a higher baseline demand for the fuel, and we're seeing a slight constriction in the supply, uh, which we can see when we get to the zoom in. Um, otherwise, on the other fuels, this might be a good chance to start slowly but surely uh, buying up orders as you can because this what can what I expect to happen is that uh, Citadel fuel I think is going to go completely wild on the nitrogen market but people are going to be caught flat-footed on perhaps the hydrogen or oxygen markets uh, where they may not have expected the particular recipe mix or, or whatever because we haven't seen the all of the details yet. So um, if I were a prudent industrialist uh, slash buyer, I would be looking to buy up uh, cheapo isotopes to hold them for the next, you know, eight weeks. And on the fuel block market, again, the fuel blocks mirror the isotope market. We're seeing a lot of heat in the Caldari fuel blocks and uh, things are staying relatively stable in all other fuel blocks. If we zoom into nitrogen, uh, again, we can really see the, the cell order shortage going on um, that's driving the price so wild. The supply seems to be tracking up slightly, slightly, but I have a hard time believing we're going to I have a hard time believing we're going to get over this 150 million mark that we seem to be uh, stuck at, especially as buy order demand creeps up to uh, to absorb more of these uh, more of these isotopes. And then last, moving on to the outlier section. Uh, first, we start where we always do with the advanced material markets. Uh, not a lot to say here. It's been relatively quiet on these markets. Uh, one couple interesting blips is Fernite Carbide uh, doing a quick price reset over 150 and uh, Phenolic Composites bouncing back from its particular pit. Uh, if you were holding on to some, uh, I'd, I'd be selling this upcoming week because uh, we could see this double dip back into the uh, existing trend. And everything else looks relatively stable. Crystalline Carbonide keeps tracking up, but... Uh, I don't think it's completely bonkers out of price. Uh, the interesting one that came up in the moon analysis was Hafnium did a pretty decent price reset. Um, and if we zoom in further, we can see that it looks like somebody has been buying out stockpiles of the Hafnium and really constricting the market where we were stable at about 10 million units on sell orders. Uh, we've seen sell orders dry up and buy orders come to to try and overtake. And it uh, looks like this shortage might be ending in the next week or so, but I think the price is gonna stay reset at its current level into the, in, in the meantime. Moving on to our particular favorite place to speculate, P4s. Um, this is where I expect the meat of Citadel speculation to be going on. Um, I do expect that suppliers will not be able to meet day zero demand. And I think that the more savvy builders have been stockpiling over the meantime, but I still think there's going to be a bunch of bright eyed, bushy tailed industrialists who show up on day zero with a shopping list and no way to fill it. So um, speculating specifically in Jita, I think might be dangerous, especially on things like sterile conduits, which have almost doubled in price and nano factories, which are so, which are particularly high at the moment. Um, but other, other options are to make it yourself, uh, getting a, a no tax set of, a no tax set of barren and temperate planets. 
Um, there's also the ability to be buying it up at remote markets where people might be jumping it out of insecure space and just looking to get rid of it. Um, this would be a great chance to do the whole savvy uh, region-wide order to just pick up every cheap order you possibly can. Um, I think the, the action of this is going to be very much in the secondary markets uh, if you want to make a, make a lot of money. In the meantime, if you just want to park a lot of money, um, there, I think there's still room to grow, but I want to build better visualization before I tell you which ones to be buying. So keep tuned. I should have that next week. I'm expecting to work on that this weekend, um, given if everything goes according to plan. Another interesting place to speculate ahead of the patch is... Uh, tech 1 and Tech 2 salvage. Uh, things went a little bit crazy this week. Uh, we're seeing burn logic circuits track up significantly and uh, armor plates continue to track up. Um, I should have included the Tech 2 markets as well. I think those are going to be far more interesting because they are far more constricted. But this would be not a bad chance to be holding on to salvage if you are a salvager. Uh, especially if it goes into armor and shield hit point kind of stuff. Um, and this might, I, I don't think we'll run into a specific shortage uh, because I think there's plenty of T1 uh, salvage out there. But again, I think that things are going to spike more than, than a lot of people have been expecting. I think the news about Citadel rigs has been poorly absorbed by the rest of the public at the moment. Moving on to ships, uh, we're gonna start where we've been starting lately with bombers. Um, I had mentioned for the last few weeks, we've been seeing upticks in the Hound and the Manticore and the Purifier, um, but it looks like those positions are reversing in the last, in over the last week. Um, this may be due to producers meeting demand and bringing the prices back down again, but it seems like whoever was stockpiling has all they need, and uh, we might see we might see an overcorrection after this. I don't. I think bombers are a are a secure enough market that we won't see too much oversupply. But uh, I'd be watching for prices under the twenty million mark to uh, stockpile into, especially if you are keeping a ear to the ground for war drums. Um, another interesting one, this one isn't a very high volume ship, but it has decided to go off the rails rather spectacularly, is the Hyperion. So it's usually at about 220 million, and the where we had seen a spike up to 240, uh, that got walked back down, back down to the 220 mark, again tracking all of the mineral costs, and now we're absolutely breaking that... Uh, that parity at the moment so if you have them sell them if you can build them um, I would bring five to ten to market uh, if you're particularly quick about it uh, I'd also expect that with as little sales volume as we're seeing that this could crash pretty significantly under the two point the 220 million mark and it'd be a great chance to buy up a couple if you were wanting them uh, also an interesting market has been the Rook, the Kaldari, uh, uh, what are they called? Recons. Kaldari Recon. Sorry. Another interesting market has been the Rook in the Kaldari Recons. Um, we've seen it track up rather significantly over the last couple of weeks up to the 2. Uh, 220 million mark. Um, it's still pretty hot at the moment. And if you are a builder, this might be a good chance to uh, still eke in into the weekend. But uh, again, I expect the same thing here that we will drop under the 190 million mark over the next week or so um, back into line with where we were before. Uh, next ship is the Panther, which looks like we saw um, a particular shortage at the moment. Uh, we've gone from the 800 million mark uh, almost touching the billion mark and we're staying pretty high at the moment so uh, volume is extremely low again but it looks like somebody has some popular plans for the for the panther uh, going on and uh, it's a pretty hot market just at this moment 
Uh, this also might have something to do, this, this might also be following some of the Mimitar advanced material market uh, bubbles, uh, but I think that's, that's, uh, I think trying to justify it that way is, uh, wishful thinking. I think this is, this is more a, somebody stocking up a couple of them as a popular ship. Uh, maybe there was a, a particularly interesting YouTube video over the last week. Um, another interesting one over the last, last week has been freighters. So we're looking right now at the Providence which has been extremely stable over the last few months. In fact, I would have expected it to start tracking down uh, off the 1.3 mark down towards 125 billion. Um, but we've seen the opposite. It seems that uh, people are really excited to get their hands on these. Um, it might just be stocking up for Citadel logistics um, to be able to deploy these things, but we also see that heat uh, reflected in the ARC market um, as the price of ARCs uh, as about 10% of the not 10% sorry about 20% of the price of an ARC is tied back to the price of the freighter that makes it right and we are seeing the prices tick up significantly and if we look at the market um, it looks like there was a particular glut back at the back in December um, that had dried up and it, we're in extreme shortage at the moment looking at one or two or three on the market as of this show. So uh, if you have an arc that you were trying to get rid of, now's a great time to be doing it. But I do have to caution people who think they should start a jump freighter business that uh, building these things while the price, expecting the prices to stay above seven billion is a bit foolhardy. So don't don't go chasing this particular high point uh, to to set your expectations. And then last, we move into modules. Uh, we're looking right now at the damage <clears throat> damage control twos, which have seen a particularly hot uh, set of sales over the last few weeks. Um, again, the same sort of spike that we saw driving the bombers and the interceptors in the last few weeks, uh, we see reflected in the damage controls. And as that heat subsides, we see the price return back to its stable state. So um, I don't think this is a great chance to speculate, but I do think this is an interesting canary when we're talking about uh, the performance of when we're talking about groups perhaps um, stockpiling for, for war. And then I believe this is the last one on the list, the mo mobile, last one on the list here is the mobile tractor unit. Um, it had been tracking up pretty high over the last couple of weeks. Looks like there was a buyout. Um, perhaps if you are a code aficionado uh, stocking up for a ganking event, um, but we've seen the price slowly ticking down again. Uh, this would be a great chance to liquidate some of those um, exploration BPOs if you can go build these mobile tractor units. Um, but I expect over the next week or so this, this uh, high point to erode. And then the last section of the show where we go over our predictions from the last week. Uh, we start where we've been where we've been starting for the last few weeks on Quaff Zero. Uh, again, we ex we expect it to stay low during the Frostline event. That event ended and prices ticked up much more quickly than I expected. Um, I did say that uh, I expected it to top out at 15 or 16 million, but it looks like it topped out at about 14 million and is tracking back down. And this is this shows up pretty. Uh, concisely in the sell order market. We're seeing uh, the buy order market is starting to track down in volume and the sell order market is starting to track up where um, this means that we could be in oversupply. So if you were stocking up and you aren't patient, you should be selling your Quaff Zero like now. Like pause the show, go sell it, count your money. Um, if you are patient and are willing to wait until the end of the year, I think you will be paid for that patience by uh, basically doubling your margin from here. So instead of trying to sell for 14 million, you're, you should be able to sell for 18 million instead. 
Um, but that requires more patience, and are you willing to spend that time being patient? Otherwise, uh, getting out while the getting's good, uh, especially when you can still get a a pretty de pretty generous buy order at twelve million, um, seems like the wise thing to do. And just in case you thought that you could go somewhere else with your uh, with your boosters, um, looks like all of the markets are following Jita at this point. And again, we can see, you can sort of see the uh, ebb and flow follow. We saw a ton of uh, activity during the event, lots of volume, lots of trading. And though right at the end of the event, people were selling, uh, we're seeing that start to erode. And I expect this, this trend to continue um, down towards a thousand a day kind of, uh, kind of levels. Another one we brought up last week was the buzzard. Um, I had said that I believe that it was going to stay stable and it's tracking back down towards 20 million. Um, still looks like there's a lot of volume going on, but I don't know if that's uh, more sellers than buyers at this point. Another one I had mentioned it for the last few weeks has been the Kaldari Navy uh, faction warfare payouts. Uh, prices had spiked two or three weeks ago and have been tracking down since. Um, things are tracking a little bit lower than usual. Um, I don't know if we're actually in buying territory yet. Uh, it looks, I think we still have some room to fall back down, but I don't know how many Kaldari Faction Warfare guys are really uh, actively cashing out their, their gains. Uh, back by popular demand, just as a quick look, geckos are stable at about 80 million. Um, both buy and sell markets seem to be level, uh, nothing much to report here. And then, just for CCP Fozzie, Long Limb Rose. I know he was trolling me in the Prosper channel earlier, and I cannot remember what about what, because I am tired. <laughs> it's been a long week. Um, so here we are looking at Long Limb Rose. Uh, lots of volume, looks like there's... Uh, some weird buy order behavior, but seeing as this is a NPC controlled commodity, uh, this is sort of to be expected. Um, again, sell orders are, there are very few for sale and everything is going on in the buy markets. So with that, we're going to go ahead and end the show. I've been your host, Lockfox, and you've been watching the Eve Prosper Market Show. If you want to tune into the show, all you got to remember is Eve Prosper. That'll get you to Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, and the blog. We're live on Thursday, on Friday nights at 0300 most nights. If you want to tune in live, you can do so on both Twitch and YouTube at 0300 on Friday nights. That's Thursday night U.S. time. We're also up on YouTube the next morning and on a podcast. If you want to support the show, if you get value from what we do, please consider supporting us on Patreon at patreon.com slash eveprosper. Our patrons do keep the show on, on the air and help pay for hosting and license costs. Thanks again to all of our patrons who, who make the show possible. And if you can contribute and you do get value from the show, please consider supporting us. With that, I'm going to go ahead and end the show. Thanks again to everybody who tuned in live. And we will see you again next week for more market news and CSM news and general, general Eve news uh, here on the Eve Prosper Show.